I'm Shanley. Hi, Shanley. Nice to meet you. Nice I'm to Ms. Marquez. Marquez. Thank you for having me. I've never been Absolutely. to a burlesque show, so this is exciting for me. Excited to pop your cherry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so appropriate for Playboy. <laughs> um, and it's also cannabis. Yes. Incorp there's cannabis incorporated into this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marijuana Madness. Dreamed about a reefer, five foot long. Mighty mad, but not too strong. My name is Elisa Marquez, stage name Miss Marquez. I'm a burlesque performer here in Los Angeles. I've been performing here for about six years, and I'm the co-producer of Marijuana Madness. When you don't get dry, you know you're high. Everything is dandy. So why burlesque? and cannabis. What made you come up with that idea? Well, I think burlesque is a fantastic platform. It's uh, wildly popular here in Los Angeles as a live performance art, and I think it's a great platform to put cannabis on and also to tell the story of cannabis prohibition. That obscene <laughs> grass straight from Satan's garden, that bambalacha, that mooka, that reefer, that nasty, luxury-provoking tea. Ugh, fuck that shit. I think the story of cannabis prohibition during the jazz era is so important to tell because jazz music is uh, such an American thing. You know, it was birthed here in America. And there's a lot of theories that say that cannabis was the thing that created jazz. It gave the musicians the opportunity to extend time in their head to be able to create jazz. So with Marijuana Madness, I really wanted to relate that association of the actual history because I don't think a lot of people think about cannabis and jazz being so tightly intertwined. And I definitely don't think many people know how many jazz musicians were targeted once cannabis prohibition was written into law. about a drug dealer, all right? No. That is not okay. That is not okay. We don't do that here, all right? It's really easy to hold on to those stigmas until you hear the facts and hear how history really developed. And um, I do think it's really important to understand the history because without looking at the history, we don't know where we're gonna go forward and we'll just repeat it. <laughs> With burlesque and cannabis, I first started associating the two because as a burlesque performer, I have a lot of ability to be creative and to create my own acts. And I just thought cannabis was a perfect addition to that. What was your inspiration behind it all? Why'd you start this? Yeah, I mean, there's so many inspirations. I've been doing burlesque for about six years. Uh, I haven't produced a show before. It's a lot of hard work producing a show in Los Angeles mm -hmm. because it's very competitive. <laughs> yeah. We're in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. the Mecca. And I just felt with cannabis, no one had been doing it yet. And I felt like it was also a really great message. <laughs> The show begins where jazz was birthed in New Orleans, and jazz was birthed out of the brothels in Storyville. Slowly we introduce uh, Harry Anslinger and his uh, detest for pretty much anyone that wasn't white. In one documented incident, Anslinger testified before Congress explaining, Marijuana is the most violence causing drug in the history of mankind. That is Whoa. true. Whoa. Hey, hey. Most Whoa. marijuana users are Negroes, Hispanics, Filipinos, and entertainers. There's also a lot of crowd interaction. It's really important for me to make the audience feel like the performance is happening all around them, that they are, are a part of the performance, that they are truly traveling back into time, so that they do feel like they're in a brothel in Storyville or a tea pad in Harlem in New York. Working in the cannabis industry and doing cannabis events over the past three years, unfortunately, we've been underground. Not until 2018 were we able to kind of come out and perform at 
venues that have higher production lighting stage, that sort of thing. I mean, those events were great, but they tended to be in downtown warehouses where you weren't given the address until the night of. Do you consume before the show or any other performers consume before the show? Uh, well, you know, like jazz musicians do kind of have a reputation for being <laughs> cannabis users. Not anymore. I used to, but uh, I, I have too much responsibility these days. I'm a band leader and I sing and I'm directing the band and I interact with it. I have a lot going on. I like it when the night's over. But no, I never smoke before I play these days. For me, it definitely real depends on the type of show I'm doing. If I'm doing the cannabis show where the audience is consuming, I feel like it helps me tap into their vibe. Just like if I'm performing in a nightlife venue in Hollywood, I like to enjoy a glass of wine or maybe two sometimes mm -hmm. to kind of get in that vibe. <laughs> first time I consumed cannabis was, I think, like a lot of people's first experience. It was after prom, junior year. Uh, my prom date had a little bit of the stuff and it was uh, my first experience trying it. Apart from that first experience, I didn't really consume um, very often. When I was training in ballet uh, during my younger years, I was so focused on my career that cannabis really wasn't a part of my lifestyle, but really it was because my mom was smart enough to tell me at an early age not to ever try cannabis because it would give me the munchies and then it would make me fat. And then as a little 16-year-old ballerina, that was my worst fear. So it took me some time to get back to trying cannabis. So like I said, I've never been to a burlesque show. And I've seen like clips on YouTube, yeah. but I kind of want to learn. Could you teach me like some of the basics? Absolutely, okay. I'd be happy to. I'm I actually nervous. teach a burlesque class. Really? It's called Empowerment and Heels. And the whole goal of the class is to get each body any type of body, any type of gender, any type of size, to get in tune with their own sensual movement vocabulary. So I'm gonna show you four basic burlesque moves that okay. I utilize in that class. Cool. To kind of get people warmed up and loose. All right. Sound good? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you look terrified. I, I am terrified. <laughs> I'm like right. the most awkward person, so this is gonna be fun. All right, let's start with our shoulders, okay. right? Mm -hmm. We have beautiful shoulders. So rock your shoulders right to left, front to back. Right to left, front to back. Front to the back, a front to the back, a front to the back. Double time. Uh, 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 and shake it up. Uh, shake it up. Shake it up. I wish I had boobs for this. <laughs> honestly. Well, why don't we work the bottom half? Okay. Now? All right. So turn around. Same sort of thing, but right to left. We go right, left, right, left, right, left. Now double time. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. <laughs> now this time, move your feet really quick. Right to left and put your booty up. And oh. then it'll just all shake. Yeah! <laughs> you got it! Woo! <laughs> shake that upper hand. Yeah, girl. <laughs> so what I just taught you right now was the classic shake and shimmy. So we got our shakes and we got a shimmy. You got it. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to use that in the club tonight. <laughs> that I'm super proud of of our marijuana experience is the ability to elevate your experience before the show, during intermission, and after the show. I took a dab that was like half the size of that and it was like a solid four hits. So okay, you're good to should go. be good. So I just yeah. yeah. You wanted a super tiny one. And there's more. There's I know. more. There's more. Yeah, there's about three hits, he said. Oh there it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of fucked up because it's 94% THC. But I'll see you out tonight. Yeah. yeah. You'll be good. I'll see you're going to be great. Yeah, we'll see you in the club. they're like, yeah. Yeah. Vibing yeah. out. So I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Grassfed, Dan and Tomer, about two years ago at a cannabis event. My name is Dan Brownstein, and I'm the founder of Grassfed. My name is Tomer Graziani. I'm the founder of To Whom It Made Chocolates and a partner in Grassfed. I immediately fell in love with uh, their product and uh, what they do. Uh, they invited me to uh, perform and help coordinate entertainment for a show they do, Stand Up and Take Your Clothes Off. She was my first, you know, kind of automatic Default. choice to, hey, you want to help us do that? And then we just continued to work together on events. And then, uh, I think it was at the end of last year, she reached out and said that she's been thinking about doing 
a show called Marijuana Madness. Once I found out we had the opportunity to do the cannabis tastings, that the venue was right for it, um, I immediately uh, went to them because uh, I just appreciate their focus and motto about conscious consumption, healthy consumption. When we heard about that it was in this venue and we had an opportunity to do something unique where the bar has a show but a completely separate room is where we're keeping all the medication and calling it the Viper Lounge. I just took a dab and I'm high, or I'm going to be really high. Yeah. Do some of these not have THC? Yeah, we have non-medicated ones up front. So there's zero milligrams, there is CBD hemp oil in it. Nice. But it will be an on-site coactive yeah. experience. We have four different flavors. I snuck in here earlier and I saw this one. I think Grab, I'll pack. This one. Yeah, Vivian's really good. We have a few edible brands, including Tomer's Chocolate. Uh, to May. To whom it May. It's an edible named Vivian. And it's a chocolate, but there's no THC in it. Because I'm hot. But there's CBD, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> the Viper Lounge, you can expect our signature vaping bar, which has the VapeXL Evo, to my opinion, the best desktop vaporizer in the world, as well as the Da Vinci IQ. And we have rosin press machine, in which you can take your favorite strain, favorite bud, just press it and get this delicious uh, oil from, from it. And then go to the vaping bar and, and, and vape it. So that's a very cool experience to do. I'd say we both share a similar kind of philosophy, whether with the chocolates or with the event, which is to try and break down the stigma of cannabis and show that there is another way that you can consume cannabis, where you still stay active, engage, and use cannabis to enhance whatever it is you're doing. Breaking the stoner stigma and bringing more class to grass, um, more sophistication. Similar to wine connoisseurs, people are more sophisticated these days and they're looking for the terpenes, for the flavors. And we think that we bring something fresh and new to the table when it comes to flavors and when it comes to different experiences that pairs well with cannabis. What I really wanted to do by associating cannabis with my burlesque performances was also class it up a bit. Unfortunately, cannabis and cannabis users also have a stereotype of being lazy stoners or not classy or not educated. So I wanted to make it very beautiful and glamorous. Apart from the cannabis tastings that we have in the Viper Lounge, we also have a specialty CBD cocktail menu, which I'm super proud of because I have a lot of friends that are avid burlesque uh, lovers that aren't cannabis users. And maybe they're not ready their first marijuana madness to try it, but maybe they'll try a CBD cocktail. And then the next time they get the ticket for it, they'll be like, okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna taste. Because I want people's uh, perception of cannabis usage not to be intimidating. I heard you're the man I need to go to for a CBD cocktail. We have two offerings. Uh, we have a alcoholic CBD cocktail and a non-alcoholic CBD cocktail. The alcoholic is called the King Louie. It's bourbon, lemon juice, a lemon terrapin CBD with an orange wedge, and the non-alcoholic is lavender syrup, lemon juice. Think of like a, a lavender lemonade with CBD. Oh, wow. Well, I like the sound of the non-alcoholic, but I've been craving a drink. So. <laughs> okay, great. So let's do and I like bar. bourbon, so yeah. CBD and oh, bourbon, I'm win, sure it's win. well. <laughs> Your King Louis. Thank you. Very My much. pleasure. Enjoy. Oh, that's really good. Well, the effects are pain relief and everything you'd feel if you were smoking a joint without the psychoactive. So you're not going to feel stoned. Okay. Think of like a really, uh, like an extra strength Tylenol, where you're just going to feel really relaxed and kind somber. of like invincible a little bit too. Hey, if you want to <laughs> take over the world, absolutely. Perfect. Tonight was so fun. It was so fun. I'm obviously, like I said, I've never been to a burlesque show, and that was so entertaining. You guys are beautiful. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I we have another show coming up very soon, so please come back. It's please always changing. Me. It's all improv, so it's always going to be different every time you come. Awesome. So, I'm excited. Thank back. you so much. Wonderful meeting you. You're fantastic. Lovely I'll see you soon. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.